Physics is about the relationship between measurable quantities. When we get data, there's different ways that we can present it. A typical thing to do is to make a data table. But the truth is that most human beings can't run their fingers down a set of data, look at the numbers, and understand what's going on. Instead, we like more visual methods of seeing relationships between quantities, and that means graphing. About half the labs that you're going to do will involve graphing of different quantities. And lucky for you, we have available a free program called LogerPro that you're able to download and install on your computer so that you can graph one quantity against another. So, of course, the first step is just to understand the nature of this uh, software program and how to use it. So in this first lab, you're going to collect some data for a swinging pendulum and then graph it in order to understand the different uh, abilities and techniques that you can use within LogerPro. some common features of LogerPro. The first step is to open the program. LogerPro will come up with a data table on the left and a graphing space on the right. For the graphing data activity, you will be collecting data for a swinging pendulum. In this case, I'm going to graph data of a ball rolling down a ramp. Instead of entering the data, I've already created the file, so I'm simply going to open it. The default as you plot the data points is to have red open circles. We want to make some changes to the labels for the column as well as the symbols. In order to change a column, double click on the title. I'm going to call the x-axis time. The short name is going to be t. The unit is going to be second. As soon as I make the changes, the data table label has changed as well as the x-axis. I'll do the same thing for the y-axis. In this case, on the y-axis, I am plotting distance. The short name is small d and the unit is centimeters. Before closing the program, I want to go to Options because the Y column is going to determine the symbols. The default is an empty circle. Something filled is better so it's easier to see. Also, the default color is red. By going to a darker color, if you play it print out in black and white, it's going to be easier to see the points. I now choose Done. If I click on the graph, I can make the gray disappear. Notice that the data points are all collected to the left-hand side of the graph. We want to make it fill up the graphing space and also give the graph a title. I double-click on the graph, and under Graphing Options, I, off, oh, I include a title, Rolling Ball Down a Ramp. All graphs should have a title. I'm going to go to Axis Options, and on the x-axis, I see that the scaling is auto-scale larger. Because the largest data point is 110, and I'd like to see it on the graph, I'm going to change it to manual scaling and make it 110. On the x-axis, I'm going to auto-scale from 0, and then choose Done. And because I... And there we go. Now notice that this is not a straight line. Therefore, I want to change the axes in order to find the relationship between distance and time. I go to Data and choose New Calculated Column. The column is going to be called Time Squared. The short name will be T Squared, and I can, from the drop-down list, choose Superscript and add a 2. And the units are going to be Second Squared, and I do the same thing. The expression is going to be Time multiplied by Time. So enter Time, Asterisk, and Time again. You can also use caret 2. You see that in the uh, data table, there's a new column. If I'd like to see all three uh, data columns at the same time, I can expand the data table and then slide it over to the left. I'm then going to adjust the uh, graph so that they're not overlapping. I could make changes to the current graph and plot distance on the y versus time squared on the x. But instead, I'm going to insert a new graph. The default is to put the new unit on the y-axis, but I want distance on the y-axis and time squared on the x-axis. I'm going to enlarge the gra graph so I can see it a little bit better, and now double-click on it. For the graph options, I want to give it a title, distance versus time squared. And then for axis options, I choose distance on the y-axis and I take off time squared. It's possible to plot more than one thing on the y-axis, and in some of these activities you will be doing that. 
On the x-axis, I want to plot time squared and auto scale from zero. I now choose done. And I can see that the relationship is a straight line. I can find the slope of the straight line by highlighting all the data on the graph. I then choose the R equals button at the top. In Windows systems, it's labeled as R equals. In Mac systems, they don't give any labels to it. It's just the picture. I choose the uh, button and then I click on the grain and make it disappear. I now have a straight line that has a slope of almost 180 centimeters per second squared, which is the constant acceleration as the ball rolls down the graph. I have shown you how you can create uh, data tables, adjust uh, labels for axes, and then also adjust a graph, giving it a title and also changing the different parameters. How to create a new graph and define the slope. These are the different things we ask you to do for this first activity on graphing data. If you need any more help with Logger Pro, most things are intuitive, but you can always click on the Help button, and just about anything you need to do is listed there with step-by-step -step instructions.